Hello, we're doing 6-6, -6, properties of kites and trapezoids. All right, so we've already talked about special parallelograms, rectangle, rhombus, and uh, square, which a rectangle, the main thing is it's got a parallelogram with 90 degree angles all in there. Rhombus, the main thing, it's a parallelogram with all the sides can grow in, and a square is both of those put together. <laughs> Cage match. All right, so in 6-6, -6, we're talking about two more. Gosh, that was beautiful. All right, uh, kites and trapezoids. All right, first thing I want to talk about is a kite, okay? You've probably heard this before in that one movie uh, where they're like, let's go fly a kite up to the highest height. Let's go fly a kite. I think it's a... Uh, is that I robot? Yeah, it's I robot. Okay, now, <clears throat> the main thing about kites, obviously they look like a kite. They don't always have to, so don't be tricked. Don't be fooled. All right, but the main thing is, in a kite, let me read it straight out of the book so I don't screw it up. If it's a kite, then the diagonals are perpendicular, okay? All right, just like in a, you guessed it, rhombus, but this is not rhombus. In a kite, the diagonals are perpendicular, which I marked. Also, in a kite, the main thing about a kite, that's obviously true, but that's also true in rhombuses. The thing that sets kites apart is that it has, let me see, it has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Okay? Consecutive means back to back or side by side. Um, consecutive means like in a row. Like that, like when you talk about uh, consecutive home runs, that means back to back home runs, okay? So, two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. That means that this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side. They're next to each other, they're congruent. They're congruent, okay? Two main things about kites. That was kind of easy. All right, let's move on to the next part. A trapezoid. I'm guessing most of y'all have heard this word, even though you probably can't articulate the exact definition of it. Trapezoid. Trapezoid, is that correct? I love writing Z's. It's like Christmas on your face. All right? So, trapezoid. <clears throat> We're going to have to do some terms on trapezoid, because they told me to just now in the book. All right? In a trapezoid. This is a base. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. In a trapezoid, the main thing that makes it a trapezoid, it's not a parallelogram, and neither is a kite. I don't know, did I say they're special parallelograms? If I did, I meant that they're not. I'm sorry. Okay? Because they're not special parallelograms. I was kidding. Uh, I said that. That was somebody. That was my friend. He looks like me. Okay? In a trapezoid, it has one pair of parallel sides, okay? Parallelogram has the opposite sides are parallel, okay, are both parallel. Trapezoid, one pair. Now, the sides that are parallel are called the bases, okay? So that's a base and that's a base. I don't know what base is on that one. Now, these two suckers are called the legs. Like an isosceles triangle or a uh, right triangle, we have the legs or the not important stuff. Same thing here, not important stuff, all right? These angles, that angle and this angle, are called base angles, and uh, this angle and this angle match up as base angles, okay? That's the way they match up. It's like, oh, these two aren't, like, they're all base angles, but they match up differently. Like, these two match up together. These two match up together because they are connected to the same base, okay? So they're base angles, all right? Let's see if there's anything else I need to teach you. All right. <clears throat> well, I mean, really, the only thing about a trapezoid is that there's one pair of parallel sides. These are parallel. The rest is just a quadrilateral. Okay, and those are just terms. Now, I am going to teach you about a special type of trapezoid. Okay. And you know, earlier when I said I was hustling my legs, I, guess what? There's a thing such called as the such as isosceles trapezoids. An isosceles trapezoid. Okay? Isosceles trapezoid, or an isosceles triangle. What is the main thing that makes it an isosceles triangle? It has two sides that are congruent. Same thing in an isosceles trapezoid. It has two sides that are congruent. 
in a trapezoid triangle, the legs are congruent. I just gave you the term for legs, they are congruent in a trapezoid as well. It means those two are congruent, these two are still parallel, which makes a trapezoid. Okay? Now, here's the stuff you need to know. First off, an isosceles trapezoid. The base angles, the ones that match up with each other, are congruent. That one's congruent to that one, and that one's congruent to that one. Okay? Second thing, these, like the base angles that don't match up when they're right next to each other, they are supplementary. It means this one plus this one equals 180 degrees. I'm oh, sorry, it's not. That one, this angle plus this angle equals 180. This angle plus this angle equals 180. Okay? So the two things so far, and I saw this trapezoid. Legs are congruent. Base angles are congruent. The consecutive non-base angle matchups. The angles that are on the legs, how's that? Angles that are attached to each leg are supplementary. Sorry, I burped the side of my head. And also, the diagonals are congruent. If it's 18 to go from there to there, it's 18 to go from there to there. If it's 1,000 from there to there, it's 1,000 there to there. Okay, so trapezoid, because it's a trap, that means that it's got one pair of parallel sides. Isosceles trapezoid is just like that, plus legs are congruent. Now, in an isosceles trapezoid, what we said, base angles are congruent. The, uh, I don't know how they say it in there. I don't know, who cares? I'm going to say it my way. Let's say the, uh, we'll call them the leg angles, because that's easier. Our, king, our uh, supplementary. And then the last thing is the diagonals. I think they make a cool sign for diagonals. I'm going to start one. How about this? X going to give it to you. That will be diagonals, because I just made it up, and it won't be ever the diagonals thing. Okay. Good to good at gumdrops. Oh crud, I gotta teach you one more thing. Okay, last thing. Still with trapezoids. It's called the mid segment of a trapezoid. We know in a mid segment of a triangle, it goes from the midpoint of one side to the midpoint of the other side. That's the mid segment, okay? In a trapezoid. Doesn't have to be isosceles trapezoid. Those are parallel, obviously. It goes from the midpoint of a leg to the midpoint of the other leg. Now, two things you need to know about this. It's parallel to these other two that it's already parallel to. Okay, so it joins the little parallel parade. All right, and the last thing is, this is our base, this is our base, and this is our mid segment. The mid segment times 2 equals the base plus the base. If you add these two bases together, it equals twice as much as the mid-segment, okay? So like if this was, like the trick to doing this is, whichever three of these you know, plug it in. If you know the bases, plug them both in. If you know one of the bases, plug it in, put X there, and you know the mid-segment, you can solve it, okay? Um, Let's say you want to find the mid-segment, and let's say this base is 8, and this one is 12. Okay? Plug in that for a base. Plug in that for the base. Still got a 2 there, and I'll plug in X for mid-segment. How do I get rid of... First, I can add that. That's 20 equals X times 2. How do I get rid of 2? Divide. What's my mid-segment? It's 10. All day, every day. Oh. And uh, tell your friend I said hi.